Sega Master System, my very first video games console and with it so many of my earliest and fondest gaming memories, so closely bound as it was to my young impressionable 8-bit heart. The look, the design, the sophistication, the angles, those edges, I couldn't help but fall in love. Just looking at this picture here now brings back so many memories. Look at the innocence, the joy, the suspense of that young face back as I was about to unwrap my first Sega Master System game. And from that special day I would retain an interest in gaming, and specifically the SMS ever since, leading me to my ever-growing array of 8-bit and 16-bit Sega games. Just seeing all these now makes me want to look at where it all started. Ah, Golvelius! What an action RPG platformer that is. So many happy hours spent exploring caves, destroying the enemies, leveling up my character. Magical. Ah, Castle of Illusion, what a special game, brilliantly animated, excellently paced, just marvellous. Ah, oh, what memories, let's see what's next. Vigilante? Did I have this as a child? The music has me thinking so, but I don't remember this at all. I literally have no memory of having had this game whatsoever. Maybe I did, but then I have such fond memories of the games I used to own as a kid. I look at this and I feel nothing. I'm worried now that this cannot be an awesome game, otherwise I would have remembered, surely. Well, better fire up that master system and check for certain. There's a big chance now that this whole video could look very contrived and made up. Uh, people of the retro gaming community behold! Vigilante for the Sega Master System. Taken by many to be the sequel to the arcade game Kung Fu Master, which itself was ported to the NES as simply Kung Fu, Vigilante was released in the arcades in 1988, before being ported to the Sega Master System by, um, Sega in their 89th year of the 1900s. As much of a side-scrolling beat-em-up as you've ever seen one, your mission as Vigilante, for he has no name and only ever likes to be referred to in the third person, is to rescue your good lady friend Maria, who has been heinously kidnapped by New York's most fearsome gang the scamps. Sorry, I mean the rogues. Better be quick. Who knows what they'll do to her. One interesting factoid for you SMS trivia buffs is that Maria was actually known as Madonna in the arcade version of the game, therefore begging the obvious question. Why the name change? Just what did the Madonna do to rile up Sega so much? What a mystery this is. But whatever her name is, only you can get her back. Defend your turf, lay waste to the street punks in this thrilling, action-packed Sega arcade adventure game. It's a fate worse than death. Yeah, not my words, Michael, but the words of the box blurb on the back cover. Oh, but I tell you what, look at that front cover. Thank you, Sega, for dispensing with the naff clip art and making an effort by Jingo. Surely the game itself is going to equally hold up? Heh, <laughs> heh. Well, well then, here we are. This is it. Five levels of traversing from left to right, taking out basically anything that moves, doing all in your path to get back your beloved Maria and ridding this city of all its sleazoids, punks and scuzz buckets. To help you do this, Vigilante has more than just a few tricks up his sleeve. Vigilante can not only punch and kick, but get this, he can also do both when crouching. Yes, you show him Vigilante. Vigilante can also jump and even do a kick whilst jumping, though personally I found this hard to do and is mostly superfluous. But no matter, the record has been set straight here. Vigilante is one badass kung fu mofo that you do, do not, not mess with. You have an energy bar, but there are no power-ups or health items to replenish your depleted life. Only your supreme kung fu skill and street smarts are going to do the trick here, bub, with the only item to help you along the way being these here nunchucks. Lord help any brainless knife-wielding 2-bit thug that dare stand in the way of this being wielded in a fit of uncontrolled frenzy and rage. rage. Wait a minute, did I just say nunchucks? In an 80s video game? Released in the UK to be played by children? 
how on earth did this get through the censors? For those unaware, there was a bit of controversy over the term ninja back in the 80s, with this going so far as to affect the much-loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon when this name was changed to the ropey-sounding Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles instead, with the powers that be having nearly all references to Michelangelo's nunchucks being totally removed from the show. Well, Vigilante doesn't care. Vigilante is a, um... Vigilante, damn it! He doesn't play by the rules. Vigilante is a tough, no-nonsense kung fu maverick who enforces his own unique brand of uncompromising street justice. Remember, you do, do not, not mess with Vigilante. So what are these rogues whom Vigilante must take out? Core blimey son, they're a right bunch, with characters such as Mopunk, Dirty Jack, Wild Wacko and Hitman Harry going all out with their dirty tactics and villainous schemes to permanently knock you down slack alley. Most of the time they're quite easy to lay waste to, but whatever you do, don't, don't find yourself in this situation. These low lowlifes will have no hesitation beating the shit out of you if you do, and even Vigilante will find it difficult to not lose much of his health bar if this happens. The most annoying enemies, who also happen to be the most plentiful, are these tit-faced turkeys here known as Chokehold. And with good cause. Mistime your attack and Chokehold will obligingly apply the dreaded Chokehold of Doom on Vigilante, draining much of his energy whilst doing so. For your first couple of plays, I guarantee you'll get caught in his hold. Again and again. It is indeed a pain that never stops hurting. But have no fear, they don't call him Vigilante for nothing. Want to know Vigilante's tactic for beating this opening act jobber? He just jumps over him, and then off the enemy pops into the distance, never to bother you again. Vigilante sure showed him. Good work, Vigilante. Visually, this is quite a smart looking game. There's five easily distinguishable levels which stay quite close to the arcade original. It's just a shame no effort was made interacting with the surroundings in any way. Seriously, where are the platforms? I'm a big fan of level 2 personally. There's a Husker Du Zen arcade vibe to the surroundings and that is no bad thing. Husker Du rule. And so does Vigilante. Obviously. And what would any side-scrolling beat-em-up worth its Pearl Harbor soul be without an end of level boss? Once again, these end level cronies are a right bunch of cards, misfits and loons. I have no idea what bosses 3 and 4 are up to, but I'm sure you'll agree. Nothing spells fear like a boss with a tubby, bare-bulging midriff, a mohawk and one arm over his head. But Vigilante has other ideas. Vigilante says nothing spells pain better than a justified series of furious and repeated punches to the groin! Get in there, Vigilante! Eat testicular pain, scumbag! Feel my fists! That's it, Vigilante! Fist that groin! Fist that groin! This is a no-holds-barred, dog-eat-dog environment, and if that means playing dirty, Vigilante will do just that. Which brings us to the head honcho, the real deal, the big boss man himself the unappealingly named Giant Defiant, who is inconveniently for you, expert in the ancient art of telekinesis. And without those nunchucks, it's fair to say you're going to be in for a bit of a knees up. Literally, you are helpless as you float, laying in wait to be decked in time and time again. So not that I'm in any capacity to advise Vigilante, no one is, but my one piece of advice to beat the game is this, get, get the nunchucks. The nunchucks. Do this and with expert timing, that giant defiant goon will soon be defeated. Vigilante will once again be the king of this cesspool city, and Madonna, your one love, will be yours to do as you please. Not in a creepy way, goodness gracious no. Just stay safe, be consensual, and have fun. Isn't that right, Vigilante? Ha ha ha! Of course it is. Well, it's been an emotional journey, but the story has been told and a verdict has to be given. This game does have some positives. It has a pleasing distinct look which stays fairly faithful to the arcade game, it has brilliant cover art in comparison to the basic clip art efforts of previous games, and of course stars Vigilante, a no-nonsense 8-bit street smart kung fu ass kicker who has no objection to doing the dirty work if it means getting the job done. Negatives when it's undoubtedly sluggish, it's repetitive, which games of this nature tend to be, but doesn't stop games like Double Dragon and Streets of Rage doing it better, and in what is a big negative, can be completed in lightning quick speed. Vigilante is one tough dude, granted, but for a game to be completable in 20 to 30 minutes, less so upon further plays, is pretty disappointing. Final grade, C. 
stop everything. You know what? There's no evidence at all to say that there was a Master System game inside. Xmas 89? I think it was another two years before I first even actually owned the console. I must have just bought the game a while back and then just forgot. I don't know about you, but that opening montage and the music and the line about the chain gang, that really had me convinced. But when I look at the front cover, it just all fits so nicely. But isn't it weird as you get older how the mind plays tricks? <sighs> Such a shame. But look what I did manage to find. A game I most certainly did own as a youngster. Ghostbusters. Ah, what a great game. Right?